The past six months, we've been looking at reference like videos, images. What you see on those images is just static. So it doesn't show like the action. It doesn't show what's happening behind the scenes. Whether it's in Kathmandu or whether it's up in the mountains, there's always something that you need to look out for. That kind of comes into that, that danger factor where you're never sure what you're gonna see, what you're gonna hear, what you're gonna encounter. For me, this is, this is truly awesome because that's basically the game that we're trying to build. We want the, the player to be kind of surprised on every corner, to see something, want to get there, uh, but never really sure of what, what he's going to find. Kurat is the fictional Himalayan region that Far Cry 4 was tentatively using to describe its environment. The topography played well into informing how the game would be built. We're really big at giving options to the player. Basically, it's your game, your way. So you can go anywhere, approach any situation from any angle, use any type of weapons. So like having those footpaths go on or, or that main road, you could drive up and drive and shoot, basically, if you wanted. A thing in the trees. Sounds like some kind of high-pitched electrical whir from a distance. But then up close, it was just horrible. We should try and figure out a way to put that in the game somewhere. Just makes you wonder what's inside that jungle. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to see it. Yeah, death probably. Just death. Yeah. But yeah, the view from here is pretty amazing. We're just looking at those terraces over there. That's really the kind of feeling that we want to get. We want to get out of the standard uh, lush forest. This really stands out to me. And now we're just approaching the temple. And I can't wait to just hear and see it from up close. We're going to go inside the temple and maybe underground also in the game. So I really want to see how it looks from all its angles. The Tall Bahari Temple is located in the middle of Lake Fiwa. It's a traditional ancient structure with an unknown history, just the kind of setting that the developers were looking for. It's super interesting to see how the traditions kind of sustain and survive. It's not just the place itself that has this spirit, it's the people as well. They still believe it, they still carry on these traditions. Whereas back home we kind of dispose of things much more quickly. Whereas everything here seems to, uh, even if people don't know why they do it, like they still do it just because they're carrying on their tradition. It's kind of cool just to get that level of detail. And a lot of it's just bizarre juxtaposition, which I think is going to be kind of cool to try and bring some of that into the game. I think it's going to give a weird irreverence which I think is always something we look for in a Far Cry game. Coming back here and just having a slideshow and showing people pictures, yeah, that's good. But then explaining them like in detail how it was to be there and see those things, I think that's really where uh, it paid off. It was a break between filming. I remember I saw this, so there was a little old woman sitting on a step. So I started filming her. She was just sharpening this thing on the step. And a few weeks ago, we were like, we need someone to give this mission. And I was like, I have her, so we're gonna use her as inspiration. And again, that was just a small little moment that like, we've added in the game to give that clash of culture, kind of fish out of water experience. All right, so we decided to take this trip on the roof, sort of Nepali style, see if we can take in some more of the scenery. We took this crazy Jeep ride on these death trap roads. And uh, I remember seeing people on these huge rickety buses and thinking, these, these people are insane. In the research I've done, I've seen that these buses crash every week. It's not even newsworthy, it happens all the time. There were some moments, like looking down, that I was really like, if the driver doesn't know what he's doing, like, or if I was driving, I'd probably be in the ditch and I'd probably be either dead or almost dead, right? This is the perfect warm up to a two day trek. So on our way to the Gorilla Trail, we've come across a road that's been washed out by a giant avalanche. So we're gonna have to take it by foot on what looks like a pretty sketchy trail. There were a few times when I was pretty convinced we were all gonna die. I was like, this is it. At least I'm gonna die in a beautiful place. After the avalanche stricken road we've got on this van, and it's going to take us the rest of the way to the Gorilla Trail. You guys comfortable? Go get hot. With an exploration of Pokhara, the Gurkha, and the Temple Lake finished, the heart of the Himalayas was the next stop. The Gorilla Trail is what people now call the network of roads and mountain villages that the Maoist rebels used to hide and house their insurgency. 
Though the war has been over for several years, the region has only recently been deemed pacified enough for outsider travel. We got to the start of the guerrilla trail, and immediately I was in the game. I felt like I was in Kirat. Uh, the landscape was perfect. Everything looked like the game I'd been playing, um, and it was, it, was, it was an incredible feeling. We left civilization behind. So it looks like we made it up to at least the end of the ascent, but we still have about half an hour before we reach the village. Hopefully we can get there before the sun sets and have ourselves a nice little fucking rest. The first part of the trek had been treacherous, and leaving civilization for the next few days offered time to reflect on the sensory elements that could be brought into the game. The subtle moments encountered at the Bahari Temple and the feeling of tradition and spirituality were key in adding another layer to the trip. Spirituality would stay a continuing theme, taking a bizarre twist when experiencing some of Nepal's darker traditions. 